theyeshiva.net. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, everybody. We're up to Perik Hay, page 148. On top it says Balak. And we're up to Perik Hay, Hay, on 148, the first column. On top it should say Balak. So in chapter 1 of the Maimah Matevo Elech Yaakov, the Balatanya discussed, he started off to understand why the Gemara says that if you call Avraham Avram today, you're over beloved. It's a transgression. Hashem said, Your name will not be called Avram anymore. So you're not allowed to call him Avram. Asks the Gemara, Bazai, why Yaakov? You're allowed to call Yaakov? Him too, he, his name was changed to Yisrael, and Hashem says in Vayishlach, Lo yikari oit shimcha Yaakov, kim Yisrael yishmecha? So the Gemara answers, because Hasem, hader ahadre kra, because the Torah itself calls him Yaakov afterwards. Avram, once the name was changed, it never went back. You'll never have in Chumash, after the end of Lech Lecha, that he's called Avram. He's forever Avram. So Hashem said, your name should not be called Avram. It meant literally, never again. With Yaakov, many times after the change, he's called Yaakov. Right? Till today, very often, the Pasuk refers to him, or Chazal referred to him as Yaakov Avinu. Even in the Torah itself, after the name change. Sometimes he's taka called Yisrael, but sometimes he's called Yaakov. So if the Torah itself is calling him Yaakov after the name change, obviously... It doesn't mean you could never be called Yaakov again because Hashem himself calls him Yaakov. That's the distinction the Gemara makes. So the Balatanya says, what's Taka the Pshat in this? It means that once Avram became Avram, he became Avram. But once Yaakov became Yisrael, he still remains Yaakov. Because there are two steps that are necessary. One is Yaakov, one is Yisrael, and you can't reach Yisrael without Yaakov. In order to understand this, and how did this come in? Because of the Pasuk, Matoivu Ayalecha, Yaakov, Mishkin Esachi Yisrael. This is, of course, one of the examples where the name Yaakov is used yet again. Many, many portions after the name change. One of the name change was in Vibrations and Vayishlach, and this is in Balak. So you have to understand what the name Yaakov is. And so he says that Yaakov comes from the word Vayakveni, Esav, when he discovered that the blessings were taken from him. He said, ah, that's why you called him Yaakov. He tells Yitzchak, Kachi Karashma Yaakov. Now I know why his name is Yaakov. By Yaakveni He uh, he outsmarted me twice. Akveni means he um uh, Yeah, I don't know. Deceived, uh, cut me off, uh, usurped me, outsmarted me. By Yaakveni. You know, he took this. Um, uh, huh? Appropriated, yeah. It was a very ambitious and like sly move to cut me out of the scene. What was it, twice? He took my birthright and now he took my blessing. And of course, you see right away the language is similar. Pchairasi comes from the word pchair, beis chaf reish, and birchasi comes from the word beirach, which is beis reish chaf, the same letters. Just a different configuration. First he took my birthright, Beis Chaf Reish, and then he took my bracha, my blessing, which is again, Beis Reish Chaf, the same exact letters of the Hebrew alphabet. That's, the, that's why it's called Yaakov. In order to understand all this, Balatanya went into a discussion why the soul comes down into this world. Usually you say in order to get reward in Gan Eden. As a result of the work in this world, it gets reward in Gan Eden. The question is, before it was created, there was also in Gan Eden. And it basked and bathed in the radiance of the Shekhinah, Nenis Meziva Shekhinah. What then is the Yisra and what's the benefit, the advantage as a result of the descent in this world? And he said there's many, there's Kama Tirutzim, there's, there are def, different answers that are given throughout the generations in Svarim Hagdoshim and Taira. But he says, Tirutz Amiti, the authentic answer, meaning the ultimate, every answer is authentic, but the ultimate authentic answer is that the neshama came down into this world to become a Baal 
Makam Shabala Chuva I'm the main Sadik and Gmura Michaelam Lamat. Where Bali Chuva stand, the Gamora says in Brachas Lamadalat, complete Sadikim can stand. That's what happens in this world. The Mishnah says, Yafir Shaachas, but Shuva my Simtaivim by Lamhaza. Kol Chai Lam Haba. One hour of Chuva and good deeds in this world is superior to the whole Lam Haba. He starts off with Chuva, because what happens in this world is the Neshama is transformed from a tzaddik into a Balchuva. In heaven, the Neshama was a tzaddik, not just a tzaddik, but a tzaddik gomer. Because the soul, before it comes into the body, as he says, is obviously in a state of tzaddik gomer. All the souls were tzaddikim gomerim, completely righteous and sacred and holy. Their entire identity, the entire identity of a soul is that it's connected to its source, in its source. So there's no question that the soul there can be defined as tzaddik and tzaddik gomer, completely holy, completely righteous, completely wholesome. What happens as a result of its descent is it go, can, it's capable of going through the transformation from being a tzaddik to being a bolshev. And b'makam shabalei tshuvaim, the main tzaddikim murim echelam lamet is not just the way you understand it. It's talking about two people in this world. There's a bolshev, there's a tzaddik. It's talking about every person, even the greatest tzaddik. The way you are a tzaddik, which is the way you're in heaven, is not the place where the bolshev stands. Where the bolshev stands, meaning where the neshama stands, as a result of coming into this world, is a completely, completely in a different plane. What does this mean, though, that it came into this world to experience tshuva, if it wouldn't come into this world, it would remain a tzaddik, but never be about tshuva. The experience of this world is the experience of tshuva. That's the experience. What is tshuva? What is this experience? So on this, the rest of the Maimer continues that there's generally three states of tshuva. Sur meira, asei toiv, and bakish shalem viratveyo. All in the capital in Tehillim. Go away from ra, from ra, from evil. Engage, asei, do good. And seek peace. It's not just three different terms. They represent three madregas, three layers or three paradigms or three dimensions of tshuva. The common denominator in all of them is that it's tshuva. And we can understand what happens in this world, why this world is the transformation from a tzaddik into tshuva. Because the, the, the meaning of the word tshuva is to return. And in this world, there is the tension of separateness. There is the tension that comes from the separateness. The greatest uh, trauma of this world is the trauma of coming into the world where the neshama, as he puts it in the, in the continuation of the Maimer, morphs, transforms itself from a state of ayin to a state of yesh. Da me ayin basal. You come from ayin, as he explains. Ayin not just from where you come. You come from ayin, from a state of ayin, from a state of no ego, of oneness. Ayin mazal Yisrael. Ein mazal is ayin mazal Yisrael. And so coming into this world, even the greatest tzaddik, even the greatest tzaddik in the world, as he puts it, who loves Hashem, is yesh mishayev. There is somebody, there is somebody who loves. So there is a tension as a result of this world of overcoming, overcoming the void, the separateness, the richuk. This is even the greatest tzaddik in the world, overcoming the richuk, and this creates the personality, the, the yearning, and the life of the tshuva, of the bal tshuva. This can't happen in heaven, because heaven, there's no returning, because there's no getting lost. <laughs> to return... <laughs> you have to go off the path. <laughs> if you follow ways, you never have to return. You're always going on the right path. If you, uh, Yazir, we said yesterday in the Haftarah, Yazir of Russia Darka, right? The Russia abandons ways, literally, Darka means he abandons the ways. I know better. You go off the beaten track. So now you say, okay, now <laughs> here's the way back. <laughs> this is how you return. Returning by definition means I wandered off, so I have to return. I was home. If you're home enough to return, you're home, you're in your place, you're in your oasis. Dude, I leave home, there's returning. The question is how far you leave. So the Balatani says there's three layers, there's tshuva. How far did you leave? How far do you have, how much do you have to return? So there's sumera. That's on one level. That's, he said, as the level of asiyah. 
the nefesh, nefesh ki sechta, where a person could completely go off the beaten track and engage in ra, brokenness, toxicity, negativity, or morality, promiscuity. Again, each soul according to its journey, its nesioinus, its challenges. And then the avoid of tshuva is sur meira, al kiena lekai bekir bi mitzuni oroa as he explains at length. It's discovering that lekai bekir bi, your alignment with the truth, with God in you, Baruch atah Hashem aleikeinu melech ha'olam, that allows you to do tshuva, to come back from a place of sur There's a higher level of tshuva. That's already the neshama from a state of yitzira, where it's not shayach tira, but there could still be a form of laziness or apathy or indifference. And here's the asay toiv, to go the extra mile in a positive relationship, even if negatively there's nothing wrong. But what's missing is in the asay toiv, and the passion, and the enthusiasm, and the connection. I may in my checklist, I may not do anything wrong, but the connection is missing. As he puts it to be an oivad alakim. The Gemara says, what's an oivad alakim? An oivad alakim is, in Chagige, somebody, the Pasuk says in Malachi, v'shaftim u'risim be'i tzadik l'rasha be'in oivad alakim l'ashalai avadai. There's a difference between an oivad alakim and somebody who's not avadai. Doesn't serve. As the Gemara, what's the difference? He already said tzadik rasha. So the Gemara says, Travayu tzadiki gemuri nino. The one who's not an Eved Elikim is also a tzadik gemur. So why is he loya vada? He says, one learns a hundred times and one learns a hundred and one times. <laughs> What's the difference? So the Tanya explains in Perek Tesvav that the common, uh, there was a Talmud of Mir, say Talmud of Chaim Shmulevich and his Musa Shmuz, used to quote this Tanya a lot. He got very uh, inspired from it. So the Talmud of his told me, Rabbi Havlin, he's the chief rabbi of Kiryat Gat today. So he was a Talmud by Rabbi Chaim Shmulevich in the, in the Mir in Yerushalayim. So he said he would uh, get on fire from this. The Balatanya says in Tanya Perek Tesvav that in the time of the Gemara, it was common to review every sugya a hundred times. Today people would probably go crazy. But it was common, you had to chaz a hundred times. So learning a hundred times, was that was common. That was not, it's not going the extra mile. hundred and one time, the hundred and one time is going out of the comfort zone. And the Gemara gives there a very interesting metaphor. That was a shuk, this is a chagiga, I think, Tesvah, and Masech the Chagiga, the Gemara says, that there was a shuk shel chamarim, there was a, um, a marketplace where you rented, like you have a rental car today. You rented a donkey. Today you rent a bike, yeah, you put in a quarter, you take a bike, or you rent a car, you take a taxi. There was a shuk shel chamarim, you rented a donkey. You needed to go somewhere, schlep something. So the Gemara says that for 10 parsa, let's say parsa is around a kilometer, 10 kilometer cost one zuz. 11 parsa cost two zuz. Doesn't make sense. You go 10 kilometers, it's $100. You go 11 kilometers, it's $200. That's not fair. I understand 20 kilometers is $200. 11 kilometers should be $110, right? Doesn't make sense. Suddenly the taxi goes an extra mile and you're getting charged the same amount for the first 10 miles. Taxis do that sometimes, right? And what do they tell you? It's night. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. <laughs> uh, it's out of the zone. It's early in the morning. I'm going back to traffic. <laughs> you don't like it, get out of the car. <laughs> so the Gemara says, because the donkey went 10 kilometers. For the donkey to go 11 kilometers, it was out of his comfort zone. So the Balatanya says in Tanya, Perek Tesvav, the derech was to learn 100 times. So he says, Zoi sapa ma'meya ve'echad, ha'meya ve'achas ha'yeseira. The 101 time, shkula keneged kulon v'oyla alem b'yeser seyser b'yeser reis. It's more powerful than the first 100 times. Ah, it's one time, but it's not just one time. It's the one time that represents a different level of connection. It's going that extra mile for somebody you love, it's a whole different thing. You, you go in your box. You, you stay in the box is one thing. Going out of that comfort zone, that's what I real I say to you. That's Oyved Elikim. You work through the Tzimtzum of Elikim. Oyved. Miloshin Ma'abed. That's the Tshuva of Asay Toiv. And if that's missing, so then there's the Tshuva of Asay Toiv to replenish the light that was missing as he explains to Saiv of Kalama.
There's the third layer of tshuva. This is connected to the soul, the way it's in Olam Habriya. It's already much higher, even if there's no sur meira, no asay toiv, but there is the frustration, there is the sense of tension because I am a yesh. There's a separateness. And the tshuva overcomes that separateness. And he says, it's not pshat that the first level, that's the real tshuva, and the other two are not real. It's the other way around. Because a higher soul that falls, falls much deeper. As he quotes from the Magid, that the machshava zara of a tzaddik creates a deeper blemish than a serious sin of an amaretz. It's a tzaddik. There's a machshava zara, just a thought. It's a fascinating, unbelievable idea. The machshava zara of a tzaddik. It's so subtle, it's so internal. But it's, it can have nuclear power because of the highness, because of the loftiness. So therefore, me'igre ram, as somebody's on the high igre, it says on the top of the, the peak of the mountain, the fall is much deeper, like the fruits on the top of the tree. When they fall from a storm, they fall much further away from the tree than the fruits that are on the lower part of the tree. That's what the Zayar says, ki adam eitzah we're compared to the, fr- to the tree. The Adam is the Eitz Asada, and this is one of the examples of the comparison. The fruits that are higher, when they fall, they fall much lower, much further. So the nephila of a higher soul, of a deeper soul, is much deeper. Even though the nephila over there means something else, because it's much, it's much more subtle, it's much higher. So that's why the Magad of Mezrich said that the Machshav Zaris of a Tzaddik could have a greater B'gam than the Avoynes Chamurim of Amayaretz. Sometimes you look, he says, I'm a tzaddik. He has a little machshav azari. Internally, there's a little thing. We know that sometimes the most dangerous diseases are things that are not visible. They're internal. When things are external, it's on one level. Something is sometimes very, very deep inside. It's not noticeable. You need x-rays or smex rays. Sometimes the x-rays don't pick it up, so you need an MRI. Sometimes the MRI doesn't pick it up yet. It's very, very internal. It's not visible. But depends on which layer of the of 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 the soul, of the body, it's it's touching, it's affecting. So the machshava zara of a tzaddik, it's only a machshava. It can have a deeper pagam than a serious concrete sin of somebody who's completely not a tzaddik. So the truva on each level is a very serious one. Sur meira seitoiv, and the third one, which is beyond mitzvahs, it's bakish shalom. It's represented by Torah. Because Torah is Mashal HaKadmoini. Kadmoinoi Shaloilam. It's a metaphor that concretizes, that brings down Kadmoinoi Shaloilam, Hashem's essence, beyond Soiviv, beyond Mimale, where the two can become connected and therefore there can be Tshuva that even here on earth, one can be completely one. That's the Tshuva on the third level to be able to return from that Rikhuk. So Abyssal Chazara, a refresher since a few days past. What's the common denominator of all tshuvas? To be able to go back to the oneness of a person. To be able to go back to the oneness of a world. That's the deeper meaning of Kaddish Li Kol Pchoyr. Pchoyr are the first letters in the alphabet that represent duality. Not oneness, but duality. What's a pchoyr literally? Abchar literally is the firstborn son. You can't have a firstborn son if you don't have a father and a mother. Right? I believe, no? <laughs> Baal Shem Tov once said that, uh, he says, everything in the world, <laughs> it's a classic word from the Baal Shem, everything in the world you could do with coldness. You could do without passion. Well, everything. You can go to work without passion. You can run a company without passion. Everything you can do without passion. You do it, you do it robotically, you do it the dead. Well, Shem there's one thing you can't do without passion. <laughs> Having a child. Ain kishi ladas. If there's no warmth, if there's no passion, it's impossible to have a child. Of course, the Baal Shem Tev did not know about artificial insemination. <laughs> That's our generation. Even that you could do without passion. But the idea what the Baal Shem was saying, if you have one of a child, it has to be passion. Abkhir, yeah, that's what we spoke about, Asaytoiv, the passion. It's where it belongs. Abkhir has a father and a mother. The alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet. So you have the father. The father is, the first letter of the ones is Aleph. First letter of the tens is Yud. First letter of the hundreds is Kuf. 
Because as we said, the Hebrew alphabet is divided into three units. Yechidois, Asiriois, or Meis. The ones, the tens, and the hundreds. What's the firstborn child? Not the father. The firstborn is Bez. Bez is the firstborn from the singles, from the singles, from the ones. What's the firstborn from the tens? Chaf. What's the firstborn from the hundreds? Resh. And that's why it's two. We already have two. There's two and there's 20 and there's 200. And it's exact double of the first. Aleph, Yud, Kav, Kuf is one and 10 and 100 is what? How much is that? 111. If you write out 111, what does it look like? One, one, one. What's the next generation? Bez, Chaf, Resh. Two, twenty, two hundred. If you write it out, what does it look like? Two, two, two. You see? One, 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 two, two, two. And the Balatanya doesn't say it explicitly, but it goes on. There's a shtickle from the Apter of Oyev Yisrael Parshish Boy. He speaks about Pidyan Aben. So he brings it out explicitly. If you go on, the whole alphabet goes that way. The next one is, you go to Gimel. So you have Gimel, and then you have Lamet, and then you have... Right? Sh- uh, shin. So what is it? Three and 30 and 300. So how do you do it? Three, three, three. <laughs> one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. And then you continue right there. So you go to the Dalit. That's in the unit. In the ones, you have four. And then in the tens, you have mem is 40. And then you have tough, which is the last letter of the alphabet, is 400. So you have four and 40 and 400. So what does it look like? Four, four, four. So the beginning of duality is two, two, two. Where there's not one, but there's already twos. What's the first duality? The first duality is the duality between the oneness of Hashem and the world. Between God and me. That duality, that separateness. That's what Pchayr is. That's why there's a concept of tshuva. That only happens in this world. Olam hazad, there could be tshuva. Kaddish li kol Take the pchar, take the two, 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 and bring it back, li, bring it back to me. Because really it's not separate. And where do you see that it's not separate? Because take a look. One, one, one is the aleph. What's aleph? Aleph is aleph, lamet fei. Aleph is one, lamet is 30, fei is 80. How much is that? No, the mathematician. Was was done schlaffing geworden? Too early in the morning for numbers? <laughs> I thought you dream numbers. Aleph is 111, 111. Aleph is 1, Lamed is 30, Fe is 80. So 80 and 30 is 110, plus Aleph is 111. Why is that 1 1? Because that's what Aleph means. Aleph means 1. Aleph also means, Chazal say in the Medrash, Alufa Yishal Oilam. Aluf Yishalayla means the Aluf, like Aluf, Aluf in, in Parshas of Yishlachim, all the Alufim, Aluf Yasef. Aluf is a general, a leader, a ruler. How do you say Aluf in English? Uh, a chief. Yeah. A duke, a chief, yeah. A general. Yeah, in Israel, Aluf is a general. But you have, you have, it was like the governors, the princes. I think in Vayishlach they translate as the princess. Alufa Shaloyla means the prince of the world, the, the, the general of the world, the leader of the world. In other words, there's a oneness. There's, there's one boss. That's Aleph. Once you go out into the world of Bays, there's already now there's the firstborn. There's the Pchai, the child comes out of the father and the mother. Now you're separate. You could be so separate that you, do, you rebel against your parents. You don't speak to them. Or you even deny that they're your parents. Sometimes you have a tragic He's not my father. She's not my mother. I don't even know who you are. The separation could be on different levels. Like we speak, there's tshuva on a higher level, there's tshuva on a more basic level, there's tshuva on a very, very basic level. But it all has the common denominator of pchay, whether it's bays or chaf or resh. Bays is the way the separation is in asiya, where everything is on its own. Chaf is the way the separation is yitzira, where every sphere is comprised of ten. So it's already tens, and resh is the way the separation is in Bria, where every sphere is made up of a hundred. If you'll take a, 
the Bavram did this last time during the Shin, and he showed me his picture. He came afterwards. So if you take a, pa- a, 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 a page and you make dots, you just make dots. You make 10 dots. So what do you have? You have dots. If you have one point, you have one point. If you have 10, so you have a line of 10 dots, whether horizontally, whether vertically or horizontally. If you'll have 100 dots, you make 10 and 10 and 10 and 10, it's suddenly going to look like megapixels, what they call, and you'll already see a picture, you'll see an image. And all pictures, that's what a picture is. A picture is basically the megapixels, all the pixels coming together, it creates a picture. The higher it is in reality, yeah, the lower, the more detached from the oneness, you don't see the big picture. Things are isolated. The, cl- the more up you go, you see the more interconnectedness until you see the whole picture. That's why in Olam Hasi, he said every sphere is an akuda. Chesed is chesed, gvur is gvur, teferis is teferis. In Olam HaYitzir already, it encompasses ten. So each one is made of ten, so you have ten points. And Olam HaBriya, each one is encompassed of ten, but each one of those is encompassed of ten. So you have a hundred, so you have the whole picture. So it's base chaf, reish, but it's all twos. And then there's the tshuva of Kaddish li kolbchar. What was, why is the focus of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim on b'chayr? Because the Egyptians, the b'chayrim Mitzrayim, were killed for the b'chayrim of the Jewish people to be redeemed. What does that mean spiritually? The Egyptians, what was their philosophy? They detached 2-2-2 two, two, two from 1-1-1. One, one, one. In other words, if you recognize that there's a prince to the world, that means everybody's connected. So I can't abuse another person. I can't take another person's child and throw it into a river. I can't slave. I can't, I can't subjugate you to me. What allows me to subjugate you as a slave? What allowed the Egyptians to do this? What allowed the Pchoyri Mitzrayim, the Pchoyri Mitzrayim, who used to subjugate and torture the Jewish people? Where does this philosophy come from? That the 222 is completely separated from the 111. I have no allegiance to a father. There's no father. I'm on my own. If I'm on my own, so basically uh, survival of the fittest, might is right. I'm more powerful than you. I can subjugate you. What was the Chiddush of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? Kadash Li Kol B'chayr. You have to be able to align the B'chayr with Li, with me. Bring it back. Bring Beis Chaf Reish back to Aleph Yudkov. Bring it back to the Aleph. Because really it's part of the Aleph. How do you know it's part of the Aleph? Because take a look. If 111 is Aleph, what's 222? Twice Aleph. And what's 333? Three times Aleph. And what's 444? Four times Aleph. You see how the Hebrew alphabet goes. As far as you go, it's really replicating the Aleph. It's all the Aleph. It's just the Aleph being manifested in diversity. 444 is not separate from the Aleph, it's 111. It's the way 111 is manifested in diversity, but it's not separate. That's what Tshuva means. Tshuva means to be able to make from many one, from Beis Chaf Reish, be able to go back to the Kadesh Li, to align with, with me. Kadesh Li kol b'char, petekol rechem, be'odem v'abehema, be'odem v'abehema lihu. That's what the Tshuva of this world is. And we were just represented most by Yaakov. Esau said he's the Pchor. Esau said he's the Pchor. Yaakov takes the Pchor of Esau and he takes the Bracha of Esau. Pchor and Bracha are both the same thing. It's Beis Reish Chof. To take that idea, that philosophy of separateness and bring it back to holiness lift it up from its brokenness, repair it from its brokenness. We're talking the Esav and the Yaakov within each person. And to be able to bring it back to the source, to take the B'chayre, to take the Bracha and bring it back. That's the Kaddish Li Kol Based on all this, he now comes to the conclusion. Pedeke. Now Bilam says, how good, Matoivu, how good are your tents, Yaakov? Mishkin Eisechi is well, your dwelling place is Yisro. And as we know, this is such a vital uh, poem of Bilam that 365 days a year, we begin every morning's davening with this pasuk. 
you come into Shul to start davening, the introduction of davening, you start off, Matoivu, Elecha, Yaakov, Mishkin Esachisu. Before Adoy Noilam, before the Akeda, before the Karbonas, before Hoidu Baruch Shomar, we start off with this Pasuk. Why from everything that we choose a Pasuk from Bilam? Because apparently this Pasuk captures a very fundamental idea. Pidush, Habeis, Chuvishal Sur Meirava, Seitoiv, Himchinas Yaakov. The first two layers of Chuva, Sur Meirana, Seitoiv, that's represented by Yaakov. Yud Akev. Yaakov is a combination of two words. Yud, the letter Yud, and Akev. Akev means the sole of the foot, the bottom of the foot. And the reason he was called Yaakov, it says why? Because Yodoy, Oy Chezes Ba'kev Esav. Literally it means his hand was holding on to the heel of his brother Esav who was coming out first. And he was trying to chap mon. Huh? That's the Ve'akveni Zepam Hayim. Yeah, already... Already you're saying a third time in the womb he was already trying to, to hold on to him, but that Esav didn't know about. <laughs> that Esav didn't know about. <laughs> that everybody else knew, but Esav, Esav was a baby. He was an infant, so that he didn't know about. He probably asked around why his brother's name is Yaakov, why they would name his brother a heel. It's a strange name for a brother, right? Heel. So they probably told him the story. But Vayakveni Zepamayim is later in life. So he's holding on to his hand. In other words, there's something he wants to get from him. But the Yodoy, Echadaz Bakev Esav, is also a remez. Yodoy is the same letters like Yud. The letter Yud is Yud Vav Dalad, which is Yodoy. Yodoy, Echadaz Bakev Esav, the Chiddush of Yaakov is to bring the Yud into the Ekev. Yud Ekev. What's Pshat? Ki heim b'chines maisa. Li yer sur meira v'asei toif. Shaydei zemam shecha Yud b'chines Ekev. Yaakov represents the actions, whether it's staying away from bad or engaging the good, which is all action, by, which is bringing the Yud into Ekev. Yud represents Hashem, Yud. Hashem's name begins with Yud, Yud Kevavke. So Yod, Ekev represents the heel, which is the lowest part of the body. It's called in Medrash, in Ovis de Rebnos, in the Malach HaMovis Sheba Adam, the angel of death in the person because the blood circulation in the foot is the weakest. So Yud, as people who Khalila deal with diabetes, usually the first part that's affected is the foot because the blood circulation on a good day over there is, is because of its distance from the heart. It's, it's a smaller blood circulation. So obviously Reb Nassim calls it Malach HaMavaz Adam. You know, you can have a lot of dead skin over there on the bottom of the foot. They call it dead skin. The circulation is on a different level on the, in the Akev. But to bring the Yud all the way down into the Akev, that means to remember Hashem even in the lowest places. As he puts it earlier, I may be in exile, but I'll Nahar Kvar. I'm standing on Nahar Kvar. Yisrael Olu B'Machshava. The Jew is rooted in the deepest place, Olu B'Machshava. So I could bring the Yud into the Akev. That's Yaakov. Kvar is also Beis Reish Chav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Rechev Alekim Rebbe Yisayim, he brings, Tzimach Tzadik brings in the Hagos, yeah. V'gam Yaakov b'chol mokem hainu zayin tachtoinus. In Kabbalah, Yaakov always represents the seven middas. V'yisrael lirosh. Yisrael is a combination of two words. Yud, sin, resh, aleph, lamed. You have li, lamed, yud. And the middle letters is rosh, which means a head to me, or my head. Hupchinus moichin. Gimel rishoinus. The first three of the Sviris Chachm bin Das, Moshe Kasabal, Lakut the Torah, Sev Parshas Vayetze. This is Lakut the Torah from the Arizal. The Arizal has a Sev for Lakut the Torah in the end of Fire Vayetze. Because when the Balatanya said the Maimah, he wouldn't say Lakut the Torah, Parshas Vayetze. Vehine, Bechol Mokim Azayan Tachtoinus Nikrois Beshem Yaakov, Vezayan Tachtoinus Ubchinus Ruach Venefesh, Vegimur Rishonus Uneshama. This is what we explained. That the first two levels of tshuva relate to the nefesh and the ruach. The third level relates to neshama. The, fir- the first two relate to asiyah, yitzira. The higher is neshama, that's already Yisrael. Valkain, base tshuva, so Rishon is the nefesh v'ruach, heim p'chines Yaakov. V'zelva yakveni ze pa'amayim, hainu base tshuva sanal. It says, Yaakov outsmarted me twice. What's twice? Twice is the tshuva of sur meira and the tshuva of asetoiv. There's the Pchayra and the Bracha. 
Yaakov outsmarted me twice. He took away from Esau, both on the level of Nefesh, on the level of Ruach, to realign the duality of existence with the oneness. V'nikra ayalecha. That's why by Yaakov it's called ayalecha, the tent. Because ayal ubchinus makif. A tent encompasses you, like you sleep in a tent. It's a, a, around you. Let's remember the first two layers of tshuva represent mitzvahs. And mitzvahs are mamshech. They bring forth makifim, the divine energy that encompasses the person and the world. But mitzvahs don't create. The hamshacha, the communication, in a way that is mamish internalized, this is Torah. Because the difference of mitzvahs and Torah is mitzvahs are called levushim, and Torah is called mazah. The difference is, garments also impact you, they encompass you, they're around you, you're dressed up in them, but they don't become you. Mazah in food, you are what you eat, it becomes, it's converted into your bloodstream. A person learns Torah, as he says in Tanya and Perik hey, and in many, exp- many sp- places, that Torah is digested, it's ingested within the person. That's called pnimius. Zayin Tachtoinus versus Gimel Rishonus are the spheres. From Chesed through Malchus are called Zayin Tachtoinus. And Chachma Bin Adas are called, or Keser Chachma Bin are called Gimel Rishonus. This is the explanation we say in the davening of Shabbos and Yom Tif. Literally, it means sanctify us with your mitzvahs and give us our part in your Torah. But there's a deeper explanation. Betroth us through your mitzvahs. From the word kiddushin. Hareat mekudeshesli. Bios mekadesh. Katshenu, marry us. Like you tell a woman by the chuppah, Hariat mekudashasli. Your mekudash to me, your kiddushin is called marriage, betrothal. Why? Shehurak hamshachas er makif b'chin is saiv of kalalman. He says, rak, isn't it a rak? Huh? Yeah, very good. Kamay tabas kiddushin, that's the ring. Hayy mekadash, mekadash betabas. Why a ring? Because a ring represents saiv of kalalman. That which encompasses a tabas is a circle that goes around the finger. So that represents spiritually an ermake from a place of seiv of kalam. Teire is not a ring. Teire, the communication, the relationship is internalized. The Mishnah at the end of Tainus says, the day of Torah is called the day of the Chasana. The day of the Chasana is not Kiddushin. It's Nisuyin. Hamshachas tipas Chachmeilah. That's when the seed, that's when the seed of Chachmeilah, of Hashem's deepest wisdom, comes into the Jew. What the Balatanya is saying is that there's two states in a wedding. There's what's called Kiddushin and called Nisuyin, or Erisin and Nisuyin. And the time of the Gemara was actually done 12 months apart, you know, right? There was the Kiddushan. Means you would technically get married in front of two witnesses, but there was no meal and feast. It was just a, a very modest and simple ceremony. A person got married, needed two witnesses, and you were Makadish Anisha. But she continued to live in her father's home and her parents' home, and he continued living, doing his thing. And the reason was they wanted to give them both a year to prepare for the wedding. <laughs> A year to appear for the wedding in terms of a meal and in terms of a home and in terms of tachshitim, jewelry. Twelve months, yeah. But it was more than an engagement because she was actually married. She was an Eshesi, she was married to him. It was a Kiddushan. Today it's very confusing. In modern Hebrew they call Eris an engagement and it's a... <laughs> people make a mistake. It's, not, it's, it's, it's the wrong name for it because Eris means marriage. If she wants to leave, she needs a get. She's an Eshesi. Nara Murasa's Biskilla, it's a serious thing, huh? No, whatever age it was. Whatever age. No, whatever age. Uh, it, it could be 20 years old. That was not relevant to this. Later and later generations, they put the two together. We have the Kedushin and the Nisuyan. There were different reasons for it, positive and also not positive, but they put it all together. 
So today, under the chuppah, you have both. And because you have both, it used to be the were Kedushin. And then 12 months later, you brought a chuppah, and you did sheva brachas, and you had a ksuva, and you, uh, you made a meal, and you went home together, and you started to play house, as they say. And build, Be'ez Hashem, build a family. Today we do everything together under the chuppah, and we take a break. And the break is the ksuva. The reading of the ksuva is the break between the Eresin and the Nisuyan. So the beginning of the chuppah is the Kedushin, he's Mekadashah, and they make the bracha, right? Tasha Kedushonu, Mitzvah Yitzivonu, Tzivonu ala harayiz, v'hitil lano asa, Nesuis lano, etc. Asa lano asa, Rusas, v'hitil lano asa, Nesuis lano, aydei chuppah v'kedushin, Mekadash Ami Yisrael, that's Birchus Kedushin, you're doing a mitzvah. Then they take a break, they read the Ksuva, that's just because to make a break. And then comes the second part, which is the Sheva Brachas, which is already belongs to the Nisuyan, and the Yichud room, which belongs to the Nisuyan, and the Chasin, and going home. What's the difference between the first two? So the says the difference of Makif and Pnimi. In the first one, he places a ring on her. Halachically, you don't have to have a ring. Halachically, Isha Niknis B'Shalosh Drachem, B'Kesev, B'Shtar, Bibia. You could do it with money. You could do it with something that's worth money. The source of a ring comes from Kabbalah. In fact, in Shulchan Aruch, it says, Bekesef, The Ramah writes in Evan Ezer, V'nagu Yisrael, Jews have a minig to use a ring, and the Ramah says, and this comes from Zohar. In Shulchan Aruch, the Ramah says clearly, Yesha, his Lashon, I think, is Yeshal Zatam B'tikunei Zohar or something. This, the reason for this is from Zohar. That's the Tabas Kiddush. Later when they come home, this is when there could be the unity, the physical unity. What he calls Hamshacha Satipa. Hamshacha Satipa means that the seed of life could now be developed from the husband and the woman and the, and the wife and a, hopefully a child can be born from this. What does this represent spiritually? A ring is an Ermakif. It surrounds her finger. You'll also see by a chuppah, he puts a ring on her and she goes around him seven times. Also makif. Does his makif, does her makif. That's kachenu b'mitzvah secha. That's kiddush. V'sein chelkeinu b'sara secha. This is called chelkeinu. Torah is different. Torah is not just the ring encompasses you. Just like by Nisuyim, when they're living together, there's a part of the husband that, so to speak, not so to speak, mamish, is internalized in the woman. That's how a baby grows. That's how a baby develops from the mar- from the relationship between the seed and the egg, between the sperm and the egg, creating an embryo. That's not a hamshacha of makav. That's hamshacha of pnimius. Literally, the internal dimension of the husband and the internal dimension of the wife connect. What is this in spiritually? Kachenu mitzvah is like kiddushin. Every time a Jew does a mitzvah, there's an oira lekid, there's a divine energy that encompasses him or encompasses her. Like the ring. It's a kiddushin. Marry me through the mitzvah. Kiddushanu, kachenu, it's a kiddushin. Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvah is not just kiddushanu, he sanctified us. Kiddushanu, he was mekadish us through the mitzvahs. It's an union of kiddushin. That's what he says many times in Lukudah Torah already, in Tanya, Perik, Memvav. Kiddushanu is, he was mekadish us through the mitzvahs. And Kiddushin means you become a husband and a wife. But what's the definition of a husband and wife in Kiddushin? That is an Ur Makif. In other words, there's a certain energy that encompasses both of you that you call the husband and wife. But that's not enough. Now you have to have the second stage. What's the second stage? The second stage is Pnimius. In your Torah, we should find our part, Chelkeinu. And it has to be our part. It has to be my, It can't be your part. Because that's what Pnimius is. Pnimius means it goes into me. Right? If I'm teaching somebody Torah, but they don't understand it, then they didn't learn. Why? Because it went into me, but not into you. It has to go into you. Our part in your Torah. Everyone has their chalik in Torah. Everybody has their way of understanding Torah. Everybody has their contribution that they make to Torah. Every person, based on their mind, based on their soul. It's a hamshacha pnimis. That's why he says, hamshachas tipas chachme ilah. What's the connection to the tipa? The, the seed of life is rooted in moya ha'av, in the brain of the father. The Gemara says, en kishri ladas. As I said before, 
the seed of life could only communica- be communicated with awareness, with conscientiousness, with concentration. Ein kishi ladas, there is das. The origin of the seed of life doesn't begin with a physical substance. It begins with consciousness of the person in a very deep place. And then it evolves into the seed of life, which can then be absorbed by the woman and ultimately develop into an embryo. Which is why in that seed you have everything. You have the soul of the person there. You have the deepest part of the person. You have, that's how the jinnim, what we call today in science, the DNA of the father forms a child. It's not like other things. I can give a speech a whole day and say that hopefully very nice and brilliant things, but that's not DNA. <laughs> From that a baby is not born. The tippa is mamish the pnimius hanefesh. It's etzim hanefesh. And by the way, parenthetically, that's why the halacha, that's why Torah is, is very sensitive to how a person treats that part of themselves. People don't understand often these areas. They think that stam, uh, <laughs> Halach is trying to spoil fun. It's not. On the contrary, the Halach is sensitive to the deepest part of a person, how it's treated. That it shouldn't be levatola, it shouldn't, it shouldn't just be seen as nothing. It's not drinking a can of Coke, it's not having a cup of coffee. This is where the person's DNA comes out, and the DNA, that's the etzim anefesh. From here, a child, this is where the, your imprint on the child goes. Outside of Kaladirdis, we have the genes from Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Adam, and Chava. This doesn't change after 4,000 years. We are still our grandparents today. You want to see your Baba? Look at you. It's not a spiritual truth, it's a scientific truth. You don't need this is this is this is the truth. Today we just know it more and more. So the pnimius of the father comes out of it. What's Torah? Torah is the chachme law of Hashem. When a Jew learns Torah, what is it? It's like the father, so to speak, like the husband, Hashem, implanting in the Jewish mind his own tippah, his own seed, his own chachme law, his own brain, so to speak. That becomes who you are. That's why Torah is the tippah, so to speak, of Hashem. Chachme law coming into the person. Because when you understand it, you absorb it, it becomes mamish part of you. Just like the tip of the father, which can become part of the mother, of the woman, and develop a child. So there's two states. There's the mitzvahs, kiddushin, and Torah is nisuyin. Kachen of mitzvah secha, and b'yoyim chasunosoy, the chasunah zeh matan Torah. The day of the chasunah is called the day of man Torah, was the day of the chasunah. The chasunah is when they actually go home afterwards and connect in a very deep way. And that's the difference of a mitzvah and Torah. Whenever I do a mitzvah, divine energy encompasses me. A Jew puts on tefillin, a Jew gives stalker, whatever mitzvah you do. And in that sense, Talmud Torah is also a mitzvah. That's like a lavush, that's like the ring, that's like an ermakiv, like the chuppah. That encompasses you, but it's beyond the person you're dressed up in it. And the Torah is on top of you. The idea of Torah is to internalize. So therefore, ma toivu oi halecha yakiv. An oil represents that which is makif. That's Yaakov is the first two chuvas of Sur Meirava. Esav says, Yaakov took two things away from me. Sur Meira. He didn't believe that the Ra is real. He did chuva on that level. Twice, that's oil lecha. sur meira nim there's a difference. We spoke about Elekeinu and Avaya. Elekim is Mamale, Avaya is Soivet. Sur Meira, the Tshuva brings Elekeinu. You should be my God, Mamale Kalam. Havaya is connected to Asay Toiv, Soivet Kalam. But it's all on Oyel. Vizel, Vyakov, Ishtam, Yoshe, Vyholam. That's why when the Torah identifies Yaakov, he calls him Yaakov Ishtam. Yaakov is a wholesome person. He dwells in the tents. Hainu beiz holim. Two tents. Which two tents? Ham shachas havayen alikeinu. There's the tent, the oil of Surmeira, and the oil of Asetoiv, the oil of Hashem, Yutke Vavke, Baruch Hashem, and the oil of Alekeinu Alekim, as he explained. Surmeira is identifying that God is in you. Elekai Bikirbi, that's Elekeinu, to replenish the light that's missing. Asay Toivis through Soivivis Havaya, that's Oivid Elekim, go beyond Elekim, 
That's the two I hold him. Or Pinish. But he introduces it by saying, Ma toivu. Ma toivu elecha yakov. What's ma toivu? Hainu kshubab chinas ma ubitl ve'ene nida liyash. So the Altareb. Ma toivu. You know when it's good? It's good if it's in a place, state of ma. Ma is koyach ma. What's ma? Ma is what? Koyach ma is chokhmah, right? Ma, Moshe said on himself, v'nachnu ma, what are we? Kisalinu alav. Ma is something you say, what? Ma. Ma. Represents the concept of bitl ve'enu niri liyesh. The curiosity, the inquisitiveness to say what is represents a humility. It's the humility of wonder. And that is ma toivu ayelecha when it's in a state of ma, mem hey, a state of bitl humility ve'enu niri liyesh. He doesn't emerge as an egotistical person, Kamesh Kosov. It says in the Haftarah last week, the Haftarah of Balak, right? How does it end? Ma Hashem what does Hashem want from you? So he says, to do good, What's Hatsneya Lechas? To walk modestly, discreetly with God. Im Hashem Alekecha. As I heim toivu, kidiksiv ki toiv, amru razal ki toiv, ligna is hain abchinas Hatsneya Lechas. It says in Bereshis, the first day Hashem created light. Vayare lekim esa or ki toiv. Hashem saw that the light was good. Yeah. So Chazal say, what does it mean he saw it's good? It's good to hide. Ki toiv lignois. So Alter Rebbe says, what makes something good? When it's without yeshes. When it's lignois, when it's without yeshes, that's what makes it good. What makes it ma toiv? What makes something toiv when it's ma? When there's no yeshes. A person could do a mitzvah, a person could do things. But there's that sense of arrogance and, and uh, pompousness and being bombastic, even if it's in a more subtle way. But the real thing is when... Uh, what does that mean? It's concealed. It's it's, 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 it's with sneers. It's discreetly. Why? It's not just not to flaunt your own horn. The point is much deeper. It's talking about tshuva. Tshuva is coming back to oneness. Whenever you come back to oneness, there's no yesh. There's oneness. That's what tshuva, tshuva means bringing back the pchar to oneness. So there's no yesh, there's oneness. That's the difference. In other words, sometimes you speak no ego because it's a disgusting thing. But deep down you have an ego, just nobody sees it. Here we're not talking about the outer ego. That's a davar pashat. That's discussed in a lot of svarim. Here we're talking about the inner ego. The ego that's deeper, that's hidden. But that, <laughs> that's what you want, you want the real hiddenness. In other words, the real ayin. Yeah. Okay, so the whole Indian in Kabbalah that chsadim that are concealed are called eitz hachayim and from the breast and below where this is galus is called eitz hadas. Then you have mishkin oisecha Yisrael. What's Mishkan Pirush? Shabbchinis Yisrael, Ushaychin, Babchinis Pnimis Mamish, Velay, Babchinis Oyal, and Makif Lava. Oyalacha is a tent. Mishkan Oysacha is where he dwells, like Vishachanti. I will dwell. Mishkan. He dwells there. He comes into it in an internalized way, not just an Oyal. We send the past to another mind. A bias still has something to be solved. Avada. Avada. Right, right, but that's what he's saying. That's the difference of oyel lecha mishkenei secha. Oyel represents like a bias; it's makif. Mishkenei secha means that which is shoichen in you; it dwells in you. Right, right. V'hainu aidei esekatayda k'may merazal. This is what the Gemara says in Brachas. Mishachar of beis hamikdash ein la kadosh baruch hu boy lamel adal ramas shalalach. Where was the Shechina in the Beis HaMikdash? When the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the Gemara says in Brachas Davov, Hashem has in the world only Dalet Amas Shalalacha. That's the substitute of the Beis HaMikdash. That's where this Vishachanti Besaycham. That's where he dwells. In Dalet Amas, the four cubits of Allah, that's where you'll find the Shechina. Not just in an encompassing way, but in an internalized way. Nimtze Shatayri Ibchines Hashra Pnimis Kemay Vishachanti Besaycham. That's why Yisrael is my head. In the head is the gili of the moichen. That's the awareness, the brain, the mind. As he said earlier, 
The mitzvahs represents a varim chitzayinim, and Torah represents the brain, a varim apnimim. Yisrael li roish, that's dalad amashel halacha Torah, which creates the mishkin oisecha Yisrael. O klolis chiyus hanefesh bebchinus pnimis. The brain is the place where the entire life of the soul is, rests. In this, it's a central nervous system. In the other limbs, it's more makif. The thought, the brain impacts also the foot. The moment you want to move your foot, your foot is going to move. It doesn't take any time. It doesn't take a long journey from the head till the foot. You want to move your foot, your foot moves. Why? Because there's a connection. The thought ultimately illuminates even the leg. But this light of the thought and the regal could be called makif. It's there. But you're not going to say the leg is typhus, it grasps the essence of thought. That's the place where you grasp the thought. That's the mind, the brain. Through Maisa, the Yud comes all the way into the Akiv. Like we said, the Machshava comes down all the way to the foot. Through Torah, it's like the head. In other words, you can be typhus. The head is aware and it comprehends and understands. V'zelv, that's why he says, Your name shouldn't be Yaakov, it should be Yisrael. Ki sarisim elikim. What's pshat sarisim elikim? You prevailed over elikim. Pidush, shom mistarer al shem elikim. He rules over shem elikim. Al derech vatigzer oimer vayokam tzade goizer. Keniskiri inyim bezoyach elikimul. Vayinu ki shem elikim obchines mogen l'shem havaya. Elikim is a shield for havaya. Vayday esik betoyre goirim shalai. Torah makes there shouldn't be a separation between Elikim and Avayi. He called Oisik Betorah, Kodesh Baruch Hu Koyre Vishayna Kenegdoi, Valkeinu Babchines Kisarisa. So through Torah, he ultimately prevails over the shame, over the shame Elikim. Okay. Yeah. Didn't, uh, the next act after that, didn't you say go, now go home and go into your tents? Right. Yeah. So that's the idea. Uh, after Matan Torah, Hashem said, go back to your tents. Shuvu lachem la'oyalechem. That completes the man. Yeah. But now bring that into a prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always both states in marriage. Right. Right. The makif and the pnimi. The makif represents that I would call it the commitment, the overall commitment. I'm committed to you, you're committed to me. We're bound by something that's greater than both of us. Huh? We're bound by something that's greater than both of us. It's a commitment to an institution, to a relationship, to a, a life together. It's not about me, it's not about you. It's about something that transcends both of us. That's the first step. Because without that, it's a very flimsy commitment. It's like, okay, today I'm in the mood, tomorrow I'm not in the mood. The mood. It's living together, right. Marriage is not living together. Marriage is, we're now married. In other words, we enter into a relationship with something that transcends us individually. Let's call it the institution of marriage, the sacredness of marriage. Kiddushin means sacredness. But that's not enough yet. Now there's also the development of the personal connection. Timius, where they share a life together, physically and also emotionally. And the part of you comes into me, a part of me comes into you. There's the sharing, there's the inter inner connection. But there's always both. So you always have both states. There's the Kiddushan and there's the Nisoyan. And, and both are vital, because if you have the first without the latter, it's a commitment, but you know, we, we could still be separate people, we're just married. We're just committed to marriage. You sometimes have that. If you have the second without the first, so there could be a lot of connection. 
But ultimately, when uh, it hits a wall or a challenge, you say bye-bye. So the combination of both is very critical. One is, by definition, makif. It transcends you. It's not about you as an individual or you as an individual. That's the whole point. The point is it's something that we're both committed to that's beyond ourselves. That's why it can outlast the storms. On the other hand, you want a personal relationship. The primus. So it's also the third step of two. That's the primus, yeah. The primus, yeah. That's the primus, Taylor. It's a consciousness, yeah. A tzaddik comes down, and he has to become the shooter. It's like you're taking your son, and you tell him, okay, now you're going to do the beaches, you're going to go under the building, you're going to do foundations, you look at the shoes. I'm in such a good position, why are you making the shoes? Why? So apparently to become a Balshuva is such a great thing that it's worth it. <laughs> it's such a, it's marvelous, it makes me so suffer. I don't know, you know, since with the Tata Kibir, a multi-millionaire, what I need to say? Ah, okay. the, 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 the drenches and the pipes and the sewer and the schmutz and the... the I'm comfortable there, but what you... It's, it's, it's a shara. It's crazy. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.